Hello and welcome. Please pause the video. Um, there are three parts to this question. Try the first two. You can see them here on the screen. Try them on your own. All right, so notice they want us to graph a function. And there, you know, you might not recognize this function. In fact, get used to that idea. We get used to graphing the unknown because a lot of us are intimidated when we see things we don't recognize. But I think it's important to realize that any function they throw at you can be quickly graphed by setting up a table. And what you want to do in the table is try different x values. By different, I mean both positive and negative. So negative 4 and positive 4, I'll try those two. And points like 0 and 1 and 2 are great starting points. So I have two, a negative and a positive. 0, 1, and 2 are really critical. And then just to confirm, I noticed that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They, the highest I can go is 10 on this graph. So I'm going to plug in 10 and negative 10. You always want to test your extremes. We take those x values and plug them into the absolute value of 3 times x, because that's what f of x equals. f of x means a function based on the x values we're inputting into it. So let's do that. Alright, so we plug in negative 4, we get 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Take the absolute value of that, the positive distance from 0, we get 12. Plug in 4, 3 times 4 is 12, the absolute value of 12 is still 12. Plug in 0, 3 times 0 is 0, the absolute value is 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3, the absolute value of that is still 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 6, and have to take the absolute value, is still 6. 10 times 3 is 30, right? The absolute value of 30 is 30, and the same here. Negative 10 times 3 is negative 30. The absolute value of that is 30. What we just did was basically create all the points for this graph. The first point, negative 4, input, output 12. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and then go up 12. 2, 4, 6, 8. 10. Oh no, 12. We ran out of room. So we might not use that officially, but it's there. And then 4, 12 is also there. 2, 4, same height right here. If this happens, definitely label your points. Right? Negative 4, 12. We might not use that for our official part of our graph. Right? 0, 0 is next. 1, 3, and so forth. But um, that gives us a good sense of the shape of the graph. 2 and 6. So 3, 4, 5, 6 right here. Um, and then 10, 30 and negative 10, 30 are not going to fit but we know that we go way off the graph. So I need more information. So I'm going to choose negative one next for an input. What happens if I plug in negative one? Well, negative one is x, and three times negative one, the absolute value of that. Three times negative one is negative three, the absolute value of that is just three. So if I plug in negative one and get an output of three, that gives me this point here. Let's plug in, I see there's some nice symmetric value here, because both one and negative one have the same height. I'm wondering, if I plug in negative two, because two gave me a height of 6, well, negative 2 also give me that height. Let's try it. Negative 2 times 3, take the absolute value of that, and we get negative 6, right, with an absolute value, and that's just 6. So yeah, if we plug in negative 2, we also get a height of 6, right, 2, 4, 6, and you can see that the shape of an absolute value function, which you might want to familiarize yourself with, is this V shape right here. Right, and you also should label these points. We have 0, 0, we have 1, 3, we have negative 1, 3, we have 2, 6, and negative 2, 6. So we have this absolute value function. This could be a v in some direction. Then they want to know about if g of x is f of x minus 2, how is the graph of x of x translated? Well, basically, here it's telling us to subtract 2 from all of our outputs. So here, I know my table is kind of cluttered, but we can now add another column for g of x. So g of x equals f of x minus 2. Now the shortcut would be to remember that subtracting from a function like this will shift it downward, but we can see it here in the graph. I'm not going to use these first two points because they didn't fit on our graph, so I'll choose 0. If I input 0 into f of x, I get 0. So g of x equals f of x, or 0, minus 2, which is negative 2. Oops, sorry about that. Negative 2. So that means that one of the points is going to be 0, negative 2. On our graph, 0, negative 2 is here. We can see that we're starting to shift these points down. Um, I'm going to use the point 1. If I put in 1 to f of x, I get 3, right? So g of x is going to equal, or here, sorry, g of 1. I should put g of 0 here, sorry. g of 1 would equal f of 1, which is 3, minus 2, which is 1. So here, for g of 1, the point is going to be 1, comma, 1, right here. Notice it's 2 down from this point here. So, you know, if we keep doing that, we get all these points, which are just 2 below the other points that we had. And now we can graph this function. I'll use a different color. Let me use red. 
This function will be the same as our absolute value function, parallel to it in a sense, on both sides, but two points lower. And you might want to say that when you say, how is the graph of x translated to form g of x? Well, if you label g of x, right, if you say this is g of x in red or whatever, and that equals f of x minus 2, you could say it shifts our graph down by 2. Now we have h of x. Okay, so h of x, oh boy, another function. This is actually a shift our function, believe it or not, right to the to the right four times. So subtracting like this inside our parentheses shift to the right four. And you can say that and then you can show it in your table. Um, so I kind of ran out of room here, so let me just do this. Clear off my g of x. And let me just confirm. No, again, h of x is equal to f of x minus four. Watch what happens here. So draw a line. G of x, oh, sorry, h of x equals f of x minus 4. What happens here? Well, um, let's again skip these first two values. So what do we do? Well, x, uh, the input here is 0 um, for this row. So we want to know what h of 0 equals. Well, it equals f of 0 minus 4, which is f of negative 4. Do we know what f of negative 4 is? It turns out we do. When we plugged in negative 4 to f of x, the output was 12. So h of 0 is going to equal what f of negative 4 equals, which is 12. So our first point is 0, comma 12. Unfortunately, they didn't give us enough space to graph that. Oh boy. So now we plug in h of 1. h of 1 is going to equal what? f of 1 minus 4, or f of negative 3. So do we have f of negative 3? No, we don't. We can figure it out. So here, f of x equals 3x. So f of x, f of negative 3, excuse me, would equal 3 times negative 3. Oops. 3 times negative 3. And what's that? Well, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And the absolute value of negative 9 is just 9. Okay, so that means f of negative 3 equals 9. So now we have a point we can finally plot. It's the point 1, comma, 9. So where's that? I'm running out of room on our graph here. We can still use it. 1, comma, 9, I believe, is up here, right? This is our first point. And notice, um, this point is not really going to fit here. Be uh, sorry, excuse me. It's hard to think about how we map this point from the previous function, but it's coming from here. It's going over one, two, three, four times. I'll show you two more of these examples, and then we'll just plot this thing and be done with it. Um, so now we want to know what h of 2 is. Well, h of 2 is going to equal f of 2 minus 4, or f of negative 2. Right? So we find out what f of negative 2 is. f of negative 2 equals 3 times negative 2 which is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is positive 6. So if we plug in 2, the output is positive 6. So 2, 6 is right here, right? Do one more. Um, let's do... Um, these values aren't going to help us if we plug them in because they're going to be off the graph. Let's just, let's just use 3 as an example. Um, so here, last one we'll do. If, F is, if x is 3, what does h of 3 equal? Well, it equals f of 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. So we plug negative 1 into, into the function f. Let's do that. Negative 1, f of negative 1 equals 3 times negative 1, with the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3. So that means h of 3 equals 3. So this point is 3, comma 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. This point right here. So, so we can keep going with this until we find all the points we need. Or we can just take our original function and shift everything over to the right four times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep going. This point here is we go one, two, three, four. Here. And then we keep going. This point. One, two, three, four. Now I know they didn't ask us to graph this, but they might, so we want to be ready for that. This point, one, two, three, four, here. So I know my graph is kind of a mess, sorry about that. But here, if we connect these dots, right? we get um, h of x. And it's, it equals f of x, this blue right, absolute value shifted over to the right. All right, hope this helped.